Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is going to be a comprehensive guide for you to build all four of the elemental ray guns in Alpha Omega. We'll start the video off with everything you need to know about the basic building blocks of getting this done. And then I'll show you a little bit of gameplay of all four of the ray guns so you can pick the ones that you want to build. Then when you've chosen which ones you want to build and you've already done all the build up stuff that I talk about at the start of the video, we'll jump into the individual steps for each gun. Timestamps for all of this will be linked on screen so you can skip around and find the bits of the video that are relevant for you. Head into the newly opened building and on the side of the wall you should find the solitary power switch. When you turn it on, beware, you might have some dogs spawn in so watch your back. The next thing we need to do is a ventilation lockdown in the bunker. The bunker can be accessed from multiple locations around the map, but probably the easiest one just for the purpose of this guide is back here in the backyard of the green house. We're going to go through the little tunnel and enter the diner area, and then you're going to want to run from the diner space to the generator's space. When you get there, you'll see a computer which you can hold square on, as you can see in this gameplay here. And it's that computer that is going to start the lockdown. So before you do this, if you do want to grab a wall weapon and things like that, then now is the time. Then just hold square on it and you will start the lockdown procedure. You'll then need to survive in here, locked in with the doors shut for about a minute. So as I said, make sure you're ready to shoot some zombies and you'll also have some of the mutated Novas and things like that spawning in as well. So watch out for those. As soon as you're done, you're going to want to go back to the surface. And when you're back above ground, you need to repair several ventilation units. There are four of them that you need to repair and six total vent spawns. To find the vents that you specifically need to repair, you're going to want to look for the green Nova 6 gas on top of the buildings. That's basically your indicator to say, come over here, there's some gas for you to deal with. The ones that don't have gas coming out don't need to be repaired. When you're repairing a vent, just like in the Final Reich for example, you should be able to turn around and shoot zombies while doing it, so bear that in mind. And once you begin repairing a vent, you're definitely going to have some zombie spawns, so once again, watch your back. I'm going to run you through all of the vent locations now, all in one go, just so that you can absolutely get around the map without getting lost or anything like that and find all of the spawns. We'll start off here where we basically spawned into the map, looking towards the power switch area. On the right hand side is the operations building. Jump in there and then go to the left and you should be able to find yourself the first vent. Then we're going to go across the street and head into the blue APD building on the other side. When you're in that building, exit through the back door and you'll find a second vent directly to the right hand side on the house. For your third spawn, you're going to want to go back to the street and make your way further down the cul-de-sac. On the right, there's a light blue building, which is prisoner holding, and the vent is going to be located right before the back door on the right hand side, as you can see in the gameplay just here. That's your third possible vent out of six. Remember, not all of them will be smoking and need to be activated, so bear that in mind when you're running around. The next one is going to be across the street in the Brown Transfusion Facility building. You're going to want to make your way in there and then head towards the back door. Outside the back door, on your left hand side is your fourth vent. So for the fifth vent now, we're going to head to the Yellow House, an absolute classic for Nuketown, and that one's on the right hand side of the cul-de-sac. You're going to then want to run to the left side of the house and you can find the vent inside the garage. This one's a little sketchy if you've got a lot of zombies spawned in, so bear that in mind. Then finally, we're going to go towards our sixth vent. This one is going to be found by exiting the greenhouse's back door and looking towards the left, and you should see the vent just there. Also, one thing to bear in mind, you can check to see how many vents you've already repaired, just in case you forget for some reason, by looking at the lights to the left of the Pack-a-Punch machine. Four green lights mean you're done. When you've got those green lights and you've finished your four vents, you should hear an audio quote, which is something like this. Ventilation system That means you're now able to go and pack a punch, so head downstairs into the bunker, the pack a punch will be available and you'll be able to pack and double pack just like you normally would. As soon as the pack a punch is on, you're going to be able to activate four TVs around the map, but you'll only be able to activate one at a time. 
The four TV locations are as follows. One is just here in the kind of spawn area of the map. It's nestled in a corner. Another TV is behind the yellow house. There's some firewood. Looks like they might have been cooking some food. And the TV is just on a little platform there. Another TV can be located around the APD, the American Pyramid device, kind of in the back of that room. And then the fourth TV is downstairs. So head into the bunker and you're going to be looking right about here to find that location. So what do we do with the TVs? Well, pick one of the spawns that I've just shown you and then run over to it and hold square on it. You should see that it will go from having just a flat blue screen with nothing on it to showing you a ray gun logo. And you'll then find that the TV becomes a soul box. You need to fill the TV soul box with souls. And when you are finished after a fairly large number of souls, you'll see a number appear on the TV screen. You'll then be able to run over to another one of the TV locations that I showed you and do the same thing. Hold square on it to activate the soul box, fill it with souls, get a number at the end, and then note that number down. It's important that you keep the numbers written down in the order that you do the TV screens, because that, when we have done all four of the soul boxes, is going to give us a code that we can enter into Rushmore. The Rushmore AI can be located just here, and if it isn't turned on for you, you just need to go another round normally. That's what wakes him up. Anyway, you've got your four soul boxes done, you've got your four digit code, enter it by holding square into Rushmore. Rushmore's little terminal on the left hand side. That, when entered correctly, will open a case on the opposite side of the room containing Raygun Mark II frames. You can only pick these up one at a time if you're in co-op, so if your teammate grabs one, give it about 30 seconds for the quote to finish, and then you'll be able to pick up yours. You obviously want to grab yourself a frame, and then you can move on to the next step. You need to use that frame in combination with three other parts which we can find around the map. The first part is a wire piece, and it's located in the yellow house. The first spawn location for it is just here. The second spawn location quite nearby is just here. And the third spawn location for the wire piece is just here here. The second part that we need is a canister, which is located in the storage area of the map. The first spawn for it is just here, and then the second spawn for it is just here, and the third spawn for it is just here. Then finally, we have one last part to grab, which is in the solitary area of the map. This is the first spawn point for it, just here. Then this is going to be the second spawn point for it, just here. And finally, the third spawn point for the third piece is just here. Okay, for this part of the video, we'll take a look at what the elemental ray guns actually do, and we'll go V, X, Y, Z. The Raygun Mark II V fires a continuous beam of electrical energy, and at first glance, it seems like it might be a little bit less strong than some of the other ray guns. However, the unique defining feature of this one is that it regenerates its ammo. It will start off unpack a punched with 100 in reserve, and you can burn that down and fire away and just keep on firing, but it's actually going to regen all of that ammo if you give it enough time. And if you pack a punch it, it's going to get even more ammo in reserve so you can keep firing for even longer. This thing is really cool. Guns that regen ammo in zombies are so rare. And so I think that this is definitely worth building in your game. The Raygun Mark II X though is strong competition. And by the way, you can build all of these. You don't have to only build one or two or whatever. But the Raygun Mark II X is also really cool in its own right because the unpacker punched version basically is a rapid fire ray gun. This thing shoots insanely quickly, but the real glory of this weapon comes when you pack a punch it and it basically becomes a Black Ops 4 equivalent of the Tokyo and Rose from Black Ops 1. The PM63 akimbo dual wield spray and pray absolute monsters. That's what you're getting when you pack a punch the Raygun Mark II X. The rate of fire on it is just nuts. The hip fire kind of spread is huge and it's just a blast to use. The Raygun Mark II Y doesn't have a Kimbo and it doesn't regen ammo, but it can create some pretty big explosions. So the way this one works is you've got a single shot, which will just use up a regular single bullet or whatever you want to call it. But you can also charge this up to use more ammo at once and create a bigger explosion when you fire it. The downside of the Raygun Mark II Y is that the ammo is fairly scarce, especially if you're doing lots of charge shots. And while Packer Punching will double the ammo capacity of the gun, 
it still feels like compared to the insane akimbo of the X or the regen of the V, it's just a little less kind of exciting, in my opinion at least. But you might have a completely different stance on this. I mean, let me know your favorite one in the comments down below. But before you do that, you've got to check out the final gun, right? The Raygun Mark II Z. This one is basically a ray gun if it was a shotgun. They have tightened the spread so it's nowhere near as crazy as it was on the X, for example, but you're still getting a whole load of ray gun energy coming out of the end of the gun all at once. So if you've ever wondered what a ray gun shotgun would look like, here it is. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite. Now let's go on to actually building all these damn things, because while the gameplay looks very fancy, some of them can be a little bit tricky to build. They're mostly fine, but some of them have some little quirks. Okay, let's take a look at the Raygun Mark II Y. This one needs a double pack-a-punched gun, and you'll need the Brain Rot alternate ammo type on it to start the process. Once you have Brain Rot, come to the top of the map. We're going to be looking at three different dirt piles to try and find one of them that will be smoking green. The first possible dirt pile is in the backyard here, as you can see. It's just like a little mound of dirt. The second possible dirt pile is on the opposite side of the map, once again in the backyard area. And finally, the third dirt pile is in the center of the map, but still above ground on this kind of road. Check each of these locations and find the one that has green smoke coming out of it. Then, you need to use the gun that you've just got with Brain Rot to turn a zombie on top of the dirt pile. You'll want to keep letting zombies walk over it and keep shooting them with your Brain Rot gun, and eventually it will pop. And inside, you'll find yourself an elemental ammo canister. Hold square on the canister, and you'll find that a yellow ball of light rises up into the air and then flies off across the map. You're going to want to keep an eye on where it went because it's going to be necessary for this next step, as you'd imagine. However, to complete the next step, we need the teleporter to be built, so I'll run through the nine locations for that now. Your first part for it can be located just in the corner here of the transfusions house, or just by the operating table in the transfusions house just here, or in the backyard of the transfusions house lying against this kind of platform. The second part can be located in the green and white house. The first spawn is going to be just here, as you can see in my game. The second spawn is in the corner just before you go up the stairs. And the third spawn is up the stairs just here. Then finally, our third part can be located downstairs in the bunker. Head towards this perk machine. You can see the first part spawn is right here. The second possible spawn is going to be just across the room here by these kind of barrels. And then the third possible spawn is going to be across the room once again against this wall in the corner. With those parts collected, you need to craft the teleporter itself. So head to either the APD buildables bench or the upstairs in the greenhouse. Craft it and then run over to where your yellow light originally was. Shoot the light and it will shoot off down into the floor and reappear at another telepad somewhere around the map. Before you run off and go looking for it, you're going to want to place your first crafted telepad down where the light originally just was. Then start exploring. Look around the map at the telepads and you should be able to hear the light very clearly. It's got a very distinctive jingle as well as having a very distinctive glow. So look for the place that the light has teleported to. Then when you find it, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shoot the light to get it to go back to its original place and we're going to place a telepad down underneath where it just was. Now, very simply, you need to run back to the original place that you found the light and shoot it once more to make it go through the teleporter. But this time, we're going to teleport with it. So run through the teleporter as soon as the light goes into the floor. And when you pop out on the other side, you should find that you have displaced the light. It's no longer above the teleporter and you've completed this step. The next thing to do is run down to the storage area near where Adam is, and you should find, once again, the light is just waiting for you down there. You need to hold square on it, and your canister will go into the light itself and form a circle on the floor. You need to stay in this circle and kill a bunch of zombies. It's a soul box. And if you leave the circle for too long, you will fail this and you'll need to restart it. So bear that in mind. If it doesn't seem to be working for you, make sure that you've activated your light by holding square on it. Then with enough zombie kills, with you standing in the circle the entire time, you'll be able to go back over to the canister and hold square on it to pick it back up. Then very simply run over to the operations building with Rushmore, head up the stairs, and there is a crafting bench up there that you can use your newly acquired canister with an elemental charge in it combined with with those parts that we picked up previously to craft yourself your elemental version of the Raygun Mark II, the Raygun Mark II Y. 
Like I said at the beginning of the video, you've got a single shot with this, which creates a small explosion. You've got a charged shot, which creates a pretty big explosion. And you can also pack a punch this gun as well. You don't need to leave it unpacked, which is really cool. Okay, let's take a look at the Raygun Mark II Z, or Z if you're in America. And for this, you're going to need the Firebomb alternate ammo type. There are three canister spawns that I'll be showing you now, and that's what we need to use Firebomb for. The first spawn is in the bottom of the yellow house, just here on the right-hand side. You can see it's there in my game. The second canister spawn is in the bottom of the greenhouse, this time on the left side of the room here, but again in one of these kind of cabinets. And then finally, there is another possible spawn down in the lounge in the bunker on one of these wooden cabinets once again. The orange smoke is the indicator that you're in the right place where your canister has spawned in. You need to shoot the cupboard that has your canister in it with firebomb and it should pop open and allow you to pick up your canister. If you head to the top of the map, you should now see that there is purple smoke coming out of the chimney of one of the buildings. You need to throw a grenade, I think preferably a wraith fire grenade, and it needs to actually land on the top of the chimney. Here is some gameplay of me basically messing this up. You can try this a whole load of times, but if your angle is wrong, you're never really gonna get it. However, as you can see in this clip here, I use the arc of my grenade to make sure that it ends up landing exactly where it needs to go. And you guys can mimic this to hit your chimneys as well. Your success indicator will be that the fireplace inside the house with the purple smoke will be lit up with its own purple fire. There is also an alternative method that some people have been using in order to do this step, which I'll explain now. The top of the chimney is really the important part of this, getting the explosion or the fire or whatever on the chimney. And so with some of the houses, you can stand in an opposite house and shoot the top of the chimney with your firebomb weapon, and that will also successfully complete the step and light the fireplace inside. You'll want to spray a fair bit to increase your chances of actually procking it here. And this technique is definitely a bit more scattershot than I would say the Wraith Fire is. But it's an alternative method that I figured you guys might want to know nonetheless. Once your fireplace inside the house is lit, you can go over to it and hold square to place your canister into it. You'll then activate a soul box just like before, stand in the soul circle and kill zombies in there without leaving. If you do leave, you'll have to restart this little soul box. So try and stay in it the whole time. But if you need to get out to keep your life, then obviously that's worth doing. There's no penalty to restarting apart from the fact that you have to restart. Once your soul box is filled up, you should then be able to turn around and grab your canister back out of the purple fire in the fireplace. You can then take it to the crafting bench in the top of operations above Rushmore, and you can grab yourself a Raygun Mark II Z. Okay, let's take a look at the Raygun Mark II X. For this one, you need the Cryo Freeze alternate ammo type on a double pack a punched weapon. There are three spawns we now need to check to find some blue smoke. The first spawn is in the prisoner holding building. That's this blue one just here. And we're gonna be looking in this filing cabinet. It should be wafting out of the bottom. That's where the smoke will be. The second possible spawn is gonna be in the yellow house garage or garage. Again, in a filing cabinet, it'll just be wafting out of the bottom. And then finally, the location that I have in my gameplay here is in the APD area and the smoke is coming out of this desk. You need to shoot that wafting smoke with your cryo freeze alternate ammo type and it should pop open and allow you to pick up a canister inside. When you've picked that up, you'll have some blue misty zombies spawning in and you need to kill those zombies with your weapon with cryo freeze. You will most likely get more spawns of these misty zombies down in the bunker. Basically below ground is going to be where these things spawn in much more frequently. I would not bother trying to do this above ground. You just hardly get any spawns up there it seems. Each time you kill one of these blue misty zombies with cryo freeze it'll drop like a little blob of maybe element 115 or something and you need to pick up three of those blobs. Then you should get a completion quote and you'll be able to head over to this specific 115 can canister or container and place your ammo canister inside it. When the canister is in there, you'll be able to start a soul box by holding square. The idea here is that you need to stay within the circle and kill zombies. And if you leave the circle, you'll have to restart this soul box process. Once you've got enough kills within the circle next to the 115 container, you'll be able to turn back around and pick up your canister. It will now be charged so you can head over to the operations area above Rushmore and craft yourself the Raygun Mark II X. Okay, let's take a look at the Raygun Mark II V. 
For this, you need the Kilowatt alternate ammo type on a double pack a punched gun. By the way, I recommend that you get Kilowatt on a ranged weapon, not a shotgun for this. We're going to take a look now at three locations where you could have electrical sparking showing up in your game on like a wall panel in the generators area. This is one location for it, just next to the perk on the left-hand side. It'll be the bottom of this electrical box. Another spawn will be just before the tunnel to the beds on the left-hand side just here. It's a very obvious sparking where I just shot. And finally, the spawn location that I've got in my gameplay here that I'm actually going to shoot is in the kind of middle area just by this set of stairs. Shoot your electrical sparking box with your kilowatt weapon and inside you'll be able to pick up your canister. You now need to head up to the top of the map and look for the electrical pylon that is sparking yellow. It'll be pretty clear the sparks will be coming out of the top of the pylon and you need to shoot those yellow sparks with your kilowatt gun. This is why I recommended you use a ranged weapon for this. You could have a different starting pylon to me in this gameplay, so I'll show you all of the ones that I'm going to shoot and then you can check all of those locations for yourself and see which one you get first. The first one I've obviously already shot. The second one is just here. This is my third one. The fourth one is just off to the side here in the kind of backyard area, so don't forget to look back there. And then the fifth and final one is just here. There may be more pylons that you need to check, so be sure to do a little scout around if all of these locations don't bring up your sparking pylon. Also, if none of them are sparking, make sure that you've shot enough bullets into the top of the pylon to trigger the next one to spark. When you're done, you'll see that they all kind of link together and they'll point you towards a large machine which you can place your canister inside. Then if you hold square on the machine, you'll be able to start a soul box sequence right here in front of it. The idea here is that you need to kill zombies within the circle without leaving it. So if you do leave the circle for whatever reason, you'll need to restart the soul box. Kill zombies while standing inside and once you've killed enough zombies, you'll be able to turn back around and grab your canister again from the machine that you originally placed it in. Then head over to the operations area above Rushmore and you'll be able to craft yourself your brand new shiny ray gun. Okay, Mark that wraps up my video v. on the Elemental Mark II ray guns. One last thing I want to say before I go is that right now, now, for a limited time only, I'm selling Great War posters and t-shirts which show Monty versus the Shadow Man and Keepers versus Apothecons and Samantha. Whole load of cool story stuff in there. The link is waffles.ownage.com and that is in the description down below if you want to go and grab one for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. I have been Mr. Ruffle Waffles. I'll see you very soon in more videos like this that will be linked on screen and again in the description. Bye for now.